Hello and welcome to Infinity. There's a term that bugged me for absolutely ages, it's the word gamma. It crops up all over the place. It sort of appears when you're trying to set up your monitor and it appears in various parts of um, the software uh, we use. So I thought, what is it? So I've done a bit of research and this is what I've concluded that it is. So let's start off. Here we go. Let's say we've got a, and remember the olden days, because it comes from the olden days. We've got a camera and we're taking a picture of a scene here. And then what we want to do is to end up on a television set. And however, what tends to, what happens here is the picture you end up here is not the same as the picture you looked at. And it's because when you go from the sensors in here to displaying it somewhere in here, then you're going through a signal in the middle, which is just kind of electronics. And converting from that signal to what you see, you don't always get what you want. Um, it's got to do overall with this conversion between a signal and a result and then going from that result to your eyes and your brain figuring out what it's seeing because your brain is doesn't produce things exactly as are out there anyway so we need something to compensate for both for the camera's settings what it actually captures as opposed to what you're going to see and also your eyes and this is what gamma is all about uh, so what you effectively do is rather than push it the the voltage because the, this just turns things into voltage you know the camera produces a voltage um, and rather than just push it straight to the television we put it through some sort of correction that knows how to tweak it in certain ways so it comes out with the picture that we want which so if we looked at this with our eyes and we looked at it through the translation of the camera we'd see the same thing. So let's get into a little bit of graphs and things here. I hope you don't mind. So it's like the input volts here in the original picture and the output volts there. If you've got like a diagonal of 45 degrees, if it's 50 volts here, you go up there, it comes out at 50 volts there. So it's the same in and the same out. But because this is a rather odd thing, we have to tweak this a bit. And it's, it ends up, it's something like this. So that if you've got, say, 50 volts in here, you might get 25 volts out. But when you've got 75 volts, say, up here, maybe it's about 62 volts out there. So in other words, this curve changes the input voltage, which effectively comes from the camera, and the output voltage, which goes to the display. Let's sort of abstract this one little bit, little bit further, because when we get into digital stuff, uh, it, it's even more slightly different. So rather than naught say to a hundred, let's just say naught to one. The same thing, we just sort of scaled it down. And in math terms, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. So this graph here is y equals x. So in other words, whenever you get an x here, you bounce off that, and you get exactly the same value for y. You can also think of this as the input, and this is the output, like the input from the camera and the output to the television, or even from and to. So when we get this graph here, when we get this curve that corrects for for this, it's this we we could say it's going to be approximate. You can make an equation of it. So y say equals x squared. So if this is half here, then a half times a half is a quarter. Half of a half is a quarter. So it bounces down here to a quarter of the way up and so on. So what with this correction here, we've changed this simply by changing the formula here. And this number two up here, this is gamma. That's the number we put up here. We say gamma is two. And that tells us how to draw this curve here. And we can add extra curves here. So instead of two, you can have, say, to the power of 1.8. So if the number gets less, it goes down here. And you can do another one here. If you increase that to 2.2, .2, 
you get a curve down here. So it'd be a slightly different translation from one to the other. So there you've got gamma is 1.8, gamma is 2.2. And as it happens, most um, monitors, and you see it often around the place, that a gamma of 2.2 is what the normal is. So when you're setting up your monitor, it might say, do you want it to be at 2.2? And it's just setting it with this curve. 1.8, guess what? Apple. Apple decides to use this one. So there we go. That's what gamma is overall. Meanwhile, I bet you've been looking at that and saying, isn't this just a bit like curves? And you're absolutely right. So let's go back to this picture here and pretend we're doing things with it. So let's put in this picture a, um, let's have a curve. Let's put a curve on this. So that original picture, if we bring this up here, straight out to the camera, the signal you're getting was, it was a bit like this. Yeah. So if we take this now and we do a layer and uh, merge visible, it'll produce a layer above here, which is just like this one down here. So imagine this then is coming into the gamma correction. What does the gamma correction do? Well, let's put another curves onto this. And as the other one went up this way, we pull this one down here and it gets back to the original one. Yeah. So just as we had this one here was up, this one here bounces back to where it should be originally. So that's pretty much what we're doing, but this is actually useful to know because all this is doing is when you get gamma, it is very much very similar to this. Gamma can be a little bit more complicated. For example, you might have different curves applied to each of R, G and B. But overall, it's a very useful way of thinking it of being just like putting a curves on. And as this affects the midtones more than the outside, it even can be seen as something of a midtones correction. So if we just take this back to the beginning, so let's just go to the history here and slide this all the way back to our original picture. Then if we, we can do something like gamma, where's one of the places that gamma appears? It appears in levels. So when we've got here, we've got the black level and the white level, which we can slide up and down and so on. But underneath there, we've got gamma. And what does gamma do? Turn it up and it darkens the midtones, turn it down and it lightens the midtones. The blacks stay black and the whites stay white, but the ones in the middle are pulled up and down. So pretty much what you've got here in levels, you can bring up the back lap black level here. So where does black start? Yeah, and you put the minimum thing here. So everything below here is turned to black. We can turn the whites down. So everything above this line goes to white. So all that sky is going to be totally white now. But you can still jiggle the middle bit and change the middle tones as well. So that's all you're doing there with gamma. So that's the most useful thing within here. Also notice that, know that when you're setting up a profile for things like the screen and for uh, printers and things like that, because a printer is another thing where you're translating from a signal to something you look at. So you can apply a gamma curve to that. We see it in things like if you do document um, color format, where is it? So ICC profiles. When you do these ICC profiles, they've got gamma in them as well. Uh, you can also even just in the old little corners, you see it. So pre edit preferences and just the user interface. You know, we've got nice, got the light interface and the dark interface. So it's just the picture around here. But you've also got gamma. So this just turns up and down the midtones again. So there you go to let you just set your working environment to what you like. Gamma also appears if you go to this one up here, the blend ranges. So let's do it for that. So this one here you're going to get blend gamma and oh look it's 2.2 how about that 
So you can play around with this, turn it down and turn it up, and you'll get a different effect when you do blending within this. So let's get rid of that. There we go. Anyway, that's about enough. I hope you've understood a bit more about what gamma is. Um, by and large, simplest way to think of it is midtones, and it's easy to uh, to play with on the things, particularly levels. You see it, but you see it in other areas as well. So, there we go. Hope you enjoyed that one, and thank you very much for watching.